Welcome to the course. This is a very exciting course because it will make you the center of attention at social parties. You will be giving your opinion on the resignation of ministers over irregular expenses, how the US is undermining the rule of law, and how the possible devolution of Scotland could have affected the constitutional arrangement of UK. So let's look at the word constitution and what do we mean by that? It's definitely not a document for a law student or a constitutional lawyer. It is important to make this distinction from the outset because we are not looking at the constitution as a layperson. You may argue that US has a very famous constitutional document which is called the Constitution of the United States and has even influenced other constitutions around the world. Well, that is true, but as soon as we take a closer look at the document, we realize that it is a general set of rules for governance, which are open to interpretation. So how do we interpret those rules and make sense of them? We use constitutional law or public law. The same approach is used when studying the constitutional arrangement of governance in UK. If I may borrow from the cabinet manual, the first takeaway from this process of interpretation is that the UK does not have a supreme codified document that is protected by a constitutional court. Instead, UK has a parliament that is supreme in its legislative authority. So the ultimate question is where to look for constitutional rules of governance when we are concerned with the study of public or constitutional law in UK? The answer is complicated and can only be based on our understanding of some fundamental concepts of constitutional law. So first, we need to look at the structure of the government and then we will have to look at our own relationship as a citizen to our government. Let's focus on the first part. UK is a parliamentary democracy that has a constitutional sovereign. It has a sovereign parliament which is supreme to all other government institutions consisting of the Sovereign, the House of Commons, and the House of Lords. It has an executive branch that is drawn from and accountable to Parliament. Lastly, it has an independent judiciary. So in theory, the structure of the government looks like this picture, where the head of the state is the constitutional sovereign. The British sovereign can be seen as having two roles, head of state and head of the nation. As head of state, the queen plays her limited role in governance of the country, following a tradition that has evolved over a thousand years. As head of the nation, she provides for and promotes the British identity. You can find more information about these roles on the official website of the British monarch. Do you think more traditional or non-constitutional monarchs should follow the Queen's lead and establish modern democracies in their countries? What kind of challenges will the non-constitutional monarch face in this process? One clear challenge will be the delegation of absolute power to the right individuals. That group of people can be selected through a representation process like voting. The same is the case in UK where the parliament is that group. The primary duty of the parliament is to take care of the governance business by making laws through the process of legislation. The members of the parliament are elected by the people through the democratic process. The parliament is supreme to other government institutions. So in theory, the picture of the relationship of the government structure changes slightly by putting parliament on top of the constitutional monarch. The picture is still not a true representation of the government structure because it lacks the pan-national view which adds the European Union to the equation and the domestic view that adds the devolved government of Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales to the equation. So the picture will evolve into the following framework adding another layer. Since we have had an overview of these fundamental concepts, we can now look at our own relationship to the government to understand what do we mean by the constitution of a country. We will be looking at the fundamental concepts of constitutionalism in more depth in later lectures. As citizens, we are affected by the decision made by our governments. So the natural question is why we have given this power to the government. There are two reasons we have vested this power to the government. First, 
for effective governance, otherwise there would be a vote or referendum every time there is a decision to be made. Second, with time the statesmen who represent us in the parliament get better at making these decisions on our behalf. This is where the constitution comes into play and act as a rule book. The constitution not only defines our relationship with the government, but also limits the power that is held by the ministers and the prime ministers, ensuring us that the government is not becoming a suppressive regime. The constitution also acts as a safeguard to protect basic rights and freedoms of the citizens. The constitution can also be seen as a window from which we can look into the framework of the government and how it operates or is supposed to operate. This knowledge is used as a filtering device by the voters to make sure that they are electing the right person in their constituency. This way the people will have representation that is sensitive to constitutional issues and cares about their rights and freedoms.